I don't hate Fred Phelps and Westboro Baptist Church the way most people do. One of the biggest reasons for this is because I actually have identification with them. I'm not a homophobic person, so that's not my identification. I'm not a fundamentalist, that's not my identification. I'm not a Christian, that's not my identification. Like them, I have a lot of venom in me, and I have manifested it in the ways they have. Right now, I'm doing very intensive soul searching. I want to improve myself and achieve my goals. Right now, I'm focusing, zooming in on Westboro Baptist Church because it represents a layer of my soul I am seeking to remove, the moral crusader level of my soul. This level of the soul is ineffective and it prevents me from getting what I want. I see myself in Fred Phelps in Westboro Baptist Church, thus I can't hate them. And I would like to read you a position paper from the autonomy party, the political party I have. And this represents my view since I am a member of the autonomy party, a founder in fact, and thus the changes I make in my personal life reflect the party. As you can see, I have some of the same themes as Fred Phelps does, and this was before I even cared two wits about Fred Phelps. I talk about how you're either 100% against abortion and alcohol or 100% for it, and those who are not doing anything about it are the opposite. Take a close look at what I write and see the comparisons, and this is why I need to change. I want to be an iconoclast a revered iconoclast and a moral crusader is not a revered iconoclast. This is from section 6 of my book Evil the Impact of Alcohol and the Power of the Alcohol Industry. Part G. You are protesting who? To many the thought of opposing the alcohol industry is inconceivable. It seems that virtually no one can fathom the idea that the alcohol industry is bad. I confronted this type of thinking during my court case. Before my court case was assigned to Chris Kane, it was assigned to another assistant district attorney. After I pled not guilty at my very first hearing, I met with her. She had a big attitude and was acting tough. It soon became obvious that she had not yet looked at my file. It seems that they only look at your file if they need to if you plead not guilty. She briefly glanced at the file with such a cursory look that she surely could not have understood everything that happened. With great surprise, she screeched, You were protesting Joseph's liquor? People protest the Iraq War. People protest abortion. But people just don't protest alcohol establishments. It is not conceivable. The alcohol industry's control over our society is that tight. I am glad I protested Joseph's liquor that day. This protest has consequences affecting our society's dialogue on the alcohol industry. Now the fools of the court system realize that protesting the alcohol industry is a possibility that must be dealt with. Thus, the idea that the alcohol industry is objectionable has been brought to the table of our court system. Although other defendants can rant about whatever they want, the anal retentive judge did not permit me to much frame the incident as part of a bigger picture. My consolation is hopefully someday society will deem the cops, the prosecutors, the judges, and the alcohol industry the losers, and me and my allies the winners. Part H, Running for the Revolution. I have fused my anti-alcohol activism with my distance running hobby. I realized I could promote the dry cause while running marathons and ultra marathons. By the way, Fred Phelps was a runner back in the day. And according to Addicted to Hate, he even made his young kids run. I think there's something about distance running that attracts both the healthiest and the least healthiest among us. Thus, beginning in March 2003, I have run races for the Prohibition cause. I have created t-shirts to run in which have said, Ban alcohol, erect vegan shops, and boycott alcohol, go vegan. This is a great way to kill two birds with one stone. I have run long distance races while at the same time I have promoted the aims of the autonomy party. Likewise, I encourage all of you to find ways to similarly kill two birds with one stone. I encourage you to find ways to fuse your anti-alcohol activism with your hobbies. I've run the following races while promoting the anti-alcohol cause. 
the 2003 Shamrock Marathon in Virginia Beach, Virginia, the 2003 Trail Mix Ultra, 31.2 miles in Bloomington, Minnesota, the 2003 Blackfoot Ultra, 50 miles in Edmonton, Alberta, the 2004 Trail Mix Ultra in Bloomington, Minnesota, the 2004 Manitoba Marathon, 26.2 miles in Winnipeg, Manitoba. As you may realize, that just like Fred Phelps, I wanted to spread my ven- venomous message to other countries. I hope to run more races for the cause in the future. Part 7, Annoying Them Before my days of completely avoiding setting foot in the property of any alcohol establishment, one day I made life more difficult for the alcohol industry. I annoyed a brewery worker. While on a brewery tour in La Crosse, Wisconsin, I asked the tour guide countless questions. For example, I asked him why his company doesn't stop producing beer and start producing flavored, non-alcoholic beer. It became apparent that he preferred not to answer the questions and that he was irritated. I hope the next time I tour the brewery is as a government official shutting it down. I thus encourage everyone to sometime ask alcohol industry employees annoying questions. If you are at a trade show, you can grill an alcohol industry representative with tons of pointless questions. If you are at a your state fair, you can pester an alcohol vendor with questions that only serve to waste time. If a beer truck driver stops to unload beer at some store, you can be a great pest by posing unanswerable questions. The more people who pester alcohol industry employees, the better. If you are hard pressed to think of original questions to ask these employees, you can always ask the same questions over and over. You can act as if you don't understand their answers. If they say, excuse me, I gotta go, accuse them of not being customer friendly. A book by Dennis Fiery may have offered similar suggestions, such as going to trade shows.